Today we're taking a look at the Labyrinth 12 hole tenor in G from STL Ocarina. Is it as confusing as the name implies? Let's find out. <laughs> What's up, back amigos? Welcome to Oct Talk. My name is David, and today, as I mentioned, we're going to be looking at this new Ocarina from STL Ocarina as part of their classic 12 hole collection. But before we do that, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know whenever I post a new music video, tutorial, or review. So as you might know, STL Ocarina is well known for coming out with a variety of different designs and different shapes and sizes, and uh, this one is no different. This one is pretty interesting off the bat, just looking at the aesthetics. Uh, I'm assuming that the Labyrinth name came from this interesting pattern that is all over the Ocarina. And in the past, some of the problems that I've had with these element or classic 12-hole collection Ocarinas is that sometimes the design itself gets in the way of the finger hole. So immediately that was one of the first things that I took a look at. The interesting thing about this one is that they try to, um, I guess with the mold that they chose, uh, or that they made, they made this pattern intending to put the finger holes inside each of these different, um, I guess they're like oval shapes. Um, and some of them were hits and some of them were misses, like this one right here, you can see that it was intended for the thumb hole to be right in the middle of this one. This one worked out great, but this one here seems to be really close to this edge here. And that seems to be the problem over here as well. So with some of these finger holes, it actually fills nicely inside those um, intended uh, shape. But then they also feel kind of cramped, like it's forcing you to place your finger in a specific position, um, which is already difficult when it comes to the ocarina because ocarinas are meant to be originally played by the person who makes them. Like they have a, a hand shape that they have to fit the ocarina to. So this is just one more obstacle on top of putting your fingers on the holes. Now you have to put your fingers within these little ridge lines. Um, so that's a minor annoyance. It doesn't get too much in the way of the playing itself, which is good. Other than that, it's a bright red color, which is interesting. It's, uh, and I guess the benefit of those ridges because it is glaze is that if you tend to have sweaty palms or sweaty hands, these little ridges are actually probably a plus because they're gonna keep you from it slipping or sliding in a way that um, you might not be intending. So that's interesting. One other note is that it does come with the neck strap, but I feel like it's too heavy to wear around your neck. Like if it was an Alto or anything lighter than that, I think it would be fine. But because this is so heavy, I'm not sure I would really use this other than to hang it like on a wall or some place to um, store it. Now onto ergonomics, the first thing that I noticed is how heavy this ocarina is, even for a G. And also just a quick note, they consider it a tenor G. Most people in the ocarina community would call it an alto G, um, but there's a little bit of debate over tenor versus alto when it comes to an ocarina in this range, so we'll call it a tenor G. Personally, owning a couple alto slash tenor Gs, this is definitely the heaviest one that I've played so far. Um, so that's kind of a minor hindrance, especially if you're not used to that kind of weight. Um, but the shape itself actually feels nice. Like I feel like I can play this comfortably without my hands feeling cramped or anything. I do have larger hands, so having an ocarina of this size isn't a major problem for me. Um, the size diameter of the holes is nice. And one plus I will say, which I'll talk a little bit more about this in a second, is that the size of the sub holes actually play really nicely like going down to the low E the range of this ocarina is E to high C and when you play those low sub holes they're pretty strong it's probably one of the better ocarinas from STL that I've played that has really strong uh, sub holes especially for um, an ocarina of the size so that was that's awesome it also doesn't require any sort of manipulation of the positioning to get the highest notes, like, like the acute bend, which typically only works for Alta C Ocarinas. So that's the ergonomics. Now on to the best part of the ocarina, the sound. This is probably one of the better ocarinas in the STL collection that has a really strong 
sound. And the breath curve from the lowest notes to the highest notes is really steady. I didn't find any like weird jumps going from a specific interval, going from the low parts to the high parts. Um, it felt pretty comfortable. It is on the stronger end of the um, spectrum when it comes to how much air an ocarina requires. I think most ocarinas in the STL collection and probably in the West require a softer airflow, but this one takes a little bit of a push. So that's something to get used to as well. Um, because it takes a stronger breath, it also is a little bit louder than usual, which is kind of nice for a, a lower ocarina like this. Again, I have a couple Alto G's in my collection and they're not all loud like this one. So um, that would probably be the number one reason that I'd be playing this one is because of the volume and because of how well tuned it is and because of that really nice breath slope. Also a note about the tone of the ocarina, it has a slight chiff to it, which I kind of like personally. It's kind of a, uh, there's an earthiness to the tone that sounds really interesting. It's not a really pure sound like a lot of the other ocarinas within the STL collection. The texture and the tone is probably one of my favorite things about this ocarina. So to recap, aesthetically, I'm not a personal fan of these ridge lines. I feel like it can be a little bit awkward to place your fingers on them in such a specific way. I do like that because it's glazed, it would give people some extra support when it comes to sliding and just in case they have sweatier hands. It's pretty heavy for an ocarina of this size, but I really like the texture tone. I like the breath curve and the supples are actually really well tuned. So would I recommend this ocarina? Because I feel like there aren't a lot of choices in the West, more specifically North America, um, this might be one of your few options if you're interested in an Alto G specifically again because of the tonal qualities and the textured tone and the breath curve. I like those a lot. Supples too. The weight is probably my biggest turn off on this ocarina but other than that I felt like it played pretty good. That's gonna do it for this review. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if there's something else or another ocarina that you'd like me to review in the future. Very special thank you to my patrons for making these videos possible and if you'd like to help support them as well be sure to check it out at the link in the description below. Again I have some other reviews and tutorials and music videos planned that are coming out very soon so don't forget to subscribe and until that next video I hope you guys have an amazing week.